Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I am starting a brand new series teaching on Christian philosophy. I know that the word philosophy throws a lot of people off and they think, what is that? Most people think philosophy only applies to Plato, Aristotle, or something like that, but this is taken from Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, where it says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. The word philosophy is only used in this one verse, and then over in Acts chapter 17, it talks about philosophers. And uh, I'm intentionally sticking with what the Bible says using the word philosophy. Some of the newer translations would use a different term. But I'm doing this because it uh, is not a word that is commonly used, and therefore I get to define it and talk about what it is based on Scripture, and I think this will really help you. Also, I've got this book entitled Christian Philosophy. This is a teaching that I made about 20 or 25 years ago, and I've got pictures in here. The first half of this book is all scriptural things about how we have a philosophy, a way of thinking about God and our relationship with Him. But the second half of the book is more like a reference book where it goes into how do we think about some of these issues, such as I specifically deal with creation versus evolution. There are pictures, color pictures in here talking about creation versus evolution. There's also Christian uh, pictures in here talking about abortion. And then I also talk about homosexuality. This is, so the first half is kind of a theological book. The second half is kind of a reference book. And I tell you, this is really powerful. And I've got this little pamphlet that we've entitled Observing All Things that is just some of the reference material that is in the second half of that larger book, and it talks about creation versus evolution, abortion, and homosexuality. And there's a lot of stats that I took off of a homosexual website back 25 years ago or something when they were trying to make everybody feel sorry for them, and they had stats in there about how that the suicide rate among homosexuals is exponentially greater than it is among the heterosexual community. They talked about spousal abuse. They talked about all of these things, thinking that it would solicit sympathy. What it did, it actually empowered people to talk about how destructive that lifestyle is. And so now they've scrubbed all of their websites, and you won't find those stats on any websites. Uh, any of the homo homosexual, LGBTQ plus uh, things today. But at one time, these were stats that we got off of their website, and it's a great reference material. So anyway, we're offering that book. We're offering this little pamphlet entitled Observing All Things uh, as a free gift to you. We're asking for a donation for the book. We also have a study guide on this, and then we also have CDs and DVDs. Once again, let me go back to Colossians chapter 2, verse 1. It says, For I would that you knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. And so Paul was writing to a group in Colossae. This was not too far from Ephesus where Paul stayed and ministered for over three years. But some of the people who were converted under Paul's ministry in Ephesus went to Colossae and they actually evangelized, and there was a church there, and Paul heard about it, and so he was writing these people and trying to encourage them, and uh, he said specifically here in the second chapter that he had great conflict, because anytime you get the message secondhand, there is the potential that something might have been left out or maybe something was added to it, and so Paul was concerned, and he was writing this book of Colossians to just make sure that they had the basics down pat and understood the foundational truths of Christianity. He didn't want to just take it for granted that they had heard everything. So that's what the whole motive behind the book to Colossians is. And in the first part of this second chapter, he was talking about that in Christ are hidden all of the truths of wisdom and knowledge. And he says, I'm saying these things so that no one will beguile you. And then he begins to list what some of them are. And that leads up to this eighth verse and in this eighth verse, he says, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. 
Now again, the word philosophy is something that we don't use very much today, and it just applies in most people's thinking to somebody, you know, who was a philosopher back uh, before the time of Christ or something like that, and they don't think that they have a philosophy. Every one of us has a philosophy, and I'm going to be explaining this in a lot more detail. But let me first of all just go into some of these words here in this eighth verse. When it says, Beware, if you trace the entomology of that word back, it literally goes back to the Old English, and it means be war is where, where it comes from. Be at war. This is a warning on Paul's part that we need to be on guard. We need to be aware that we are under attack. And I tell you, this is one of the things that has caused so many problems in the body of Christ. Uh, they have been asleep. They have been just enjoying their time in church and reveling in what Jesus has done for us, and they haven't been engaged in the cultural war. The church has basically retreated to within the church walls, and they haven't recognized that we are at war, that there is a spirit of Antichrist out there, and there is demonic powers that's trying to destroy not only our souls, but also the freedom that was bought for us in this nation. Now, this program is heard all around the world, and I'm aware that there's people in, you know, we have 5.2 billion people around the world that could see this program. So I'm aware that not everybody watching uh, is in the United States and has the freedoms that we've enjoyed. But this nation, the United States, and many of the nations that people are watching this program in, there, there is godly principles that have actually granted us a lot of freedom, and Satan hates everything to do with God and is coming against every godly principle that this nation or any nation was established upon. He is for nothing but chaos and ungodliness, and we have been at war, but because the church wasn't aware that we were at war, we haven't been engaged. And because of it, we see our freedoms being taken away from us. We see immorality going to a realm that, I mean, it is just unthinkable. You know, 10 years ago, I don't think that most people could have even predicted that we would be where we are today. It is like there has been an explosion of ungodliness and morals have been set aside. You know, uh, marriage now can be between two men, two women. It won't be long if we don't turn things around, which I believe we're going to, and I, I'm praying and believing God for a great move of God that is going to change things. But if things didn't change the direction they're going, they will allow marriage between an adult and a child, between a person and an animal. Those kind of things have happened before. They're written about in the Bible, and this is where everything's headed. And there's a lot of people watching this think, oh, no, that'll never happen. Ten years ago, nobody would have ever thought that we would be seeing all the transgenderism and giving hormone blockers and sex reassignment surgery to children as young as four, five, six years old. Nobody would have ever believed that. I'm telling you, this is what Satan wants to do. He wants to just totally destroy, and yet many Christians aren't aware that we are in a war. They go through their day just, in a sense, uh, totally oblivious to what's going on around them. All of the homelessness that we see, the drug addiction that we see, the sexual immorality, the perversion, the uh, pornography that is just... This is a, an attack not only on the United States. It's an attack on civilization. It's an attack against anything having foundations and morality and putting limits on the ungodliness that people like to do. And uh, sad to say, all of these restrictions are being removed, and it's because the church hasn't realized we've been at war. Did you know the same thing has happened many, many times in just the secular realm, talking about not anything spiritual to do with it, but like in World War II, the United States was trying to stay out of World War II, and they were just refusing to be engaged. Matter of fact, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt actually ran uh, on a platform that he would not get involved in the European war. And, of course, all that changed on December the 7th, 1941, when Pearl Harbor was attacked by the Japanese and we were drug into the war. But prior to that time, people were just trying to ignore what was going on in the rest of the world, and they allowed Hitler to gain tremendous 
tremendous assets and uh, all of these things that he used against us. You know, it was Winston Churchill that said that World War II was the most preventable war in the history of the world because Hitler was a nobody and had no power and authority, and yet uh, Chamberlain, the Prime Minister of Britain, and uh, France and other people, they did not want to get repeat a war. They had just come out of World War I, and they were so anti-war that they allowed Hitler to invade Austria and Poland and others with no resistance whatsoever, and he gained all of their assets, their military hardware and people and things like this, and he could have been stopped early on, but they would not engage. They refused to be at war. I SAY ALL OF THESE THINGS THAT I'VE SAID TO SAY THAT IN THE SAME WAY, IN THOSE WAYS THAT WE CAN SEE THESE THINGS IN THE NATURAL REALM, DID YOU KNOW THE SAME THING IS TRUE IN THE SPIRITUAL REALM, THAT THE CHURCH HAS NOT REALIZED THAT WE HAVE AN ENEMY THAT GOES ABOUT AS A ROARING LION SEEKING WHOM HE MAY DEVOUR. I THINK THAT'S 1 PETER 5, 8. AND THE CHURCH HAS BASICALLY JUST BEEN TRYING TO IGNORE THIS AND JUST ENJOY THEIR LIVES. AND TO A DEGREE, I CAN UNDERSTAND THIS, THAT JESUS HAS SET US FREE. WE ARE IN THE WORLD, BUT WE AREN'T OF THE WORLD. AND SO IN SOME WAYS, WE CAN DETACH FROM THE THINGS THAT THE UNGODLY HAVE TO BE OCCUPIED WITH, AND WE CAN THINK ABOUT HEAVEN, AND WE CAN THINK ABOUT WHO WE ARE IN CHRIST AND WHAT WE HAVE, AND WE CAN REJOICE IN THOSE THINGS EVEN WHEN THE WORLD IS GOING TO HELL IN A HANDBASKET. I CAN UNDERSTAND THAT TO A DEGREE, BUT THE LORD ALSO TOLD US THAT WE ARE THE SALT AND THE LIGHT OF THE EARTH. AND PAUL RIGHT HERE IS TELLING THESE BELIEVERS TO BEWARE, BE AT WAR, TO RECOGNIZE THAT WE HAVE AN ENEMY WHO'S OUT TO STEAL, TO KILL, AND TO DESTROY, JOHN CHAPTER 10, VERSE 10. SO HE'S TELLING THEM, YOU NEED TO BE ON GUARD. YOU KNOW, I WAS IN VIETNAM, AND I'VE HEARD IT SAID BEFORE THAT WAR IS LONG PERIODS OF TOTAL BOREDOM INTERSPERSED BY MOMENTS OF ABSOLUTE TERROR. AND THAT REALLY KIND OF DESCRIBES WAR. I REMEMBER BEING IN VIETNAM THAT WE WOULD GO LONG STRETCHES OF TIME WITHOUT ANY ENGAGEMENT OF THE ENEMY. I WASN'T OUT IN THE FIELD AS A SOLDIER. I WAS ON A FIRE SUPPORT BASE. IT WAS A REMOTE FIRE SUPPORT BASE. AND WE WERE UNDER ATTACK AND WE WERE COMPLETELY SURROUNDED BY THE NVA AND LIKE ON MY 21ST BIRTHDAY, I TOOK 21 DIRECT MORTAR HITS ON THIS BUNKER THAT I HAD BUILT, AND YOU COULD SEE MUZZLE FIRE FROM THE ENEMY, BUT THAT WAS REALLY SELDOM. MOST OF THE TIME, WE WERE THERE, AND IT WAS JUST BORING DAY AFTER DAY, AND BECAUSE OF THIS, I PULLED BUNKER GUARD EVERY NIGHT. I WAS A CHAPLAIN'S ASSISTANT. I WASN'T ASSIGNED DIRECTLY TO THE BATTALION HEADQUARTERS. I WAS ASSIGNED TO THE BRIGADE HEADQUARTERS, AND SO IN A SENSE, I DIDN'T HAVE TO DO WHAT ALL OF THE OTHER PEOPLE ON THAT BASE DID, BUT OUT OF BOREDOM, I VOLUNTEERED TO DO BUNKER GUARD EVERY NIGHT, uh, YOU KNOW, IN CASE WE WERE ATTACKED. AND I REMEMBER DOING BUNKER GUARD THAT THE AVERAGE PERSON WOULD COME THERE AND THEY WOULD JUST GO TO SLEEP. THEY WOULDN'T EVEN, YOU KNOW, WE HAD FOUR-HOUR WATCHES, AND THE AVERAGE PERSON WOULD GO TO SLEEP. AND THERE'S LOTS OF TIMES THAT I PULLED NOT ONLY MY BUNKER GUARD, BUT I'D PULL TWO OR THREE OTHER PEOPLE BECAUSE THEY WOULDN'T EVEN, THEY WEREN'T TAKING IT SERIOUS. AND it, YOU WOULD THINK, WHY WOULD A PERSON DO THAT WHEN YOU'RE ENGAGED IN A WAR? BUT I MEAN, THERE WAS PEOPLE THAT THEY JUST, WE WENT SO MANY DAYS AND WEEKS WITHOUT ANYTHING HAPPEN THAT THEY GOT LAZY AND THEY WERE NOT ON GUARD. AND I TELL YOU, IT WAS uh, POTENTIALLY DISASTROUS. AND I'VE SEEN THAT IN WAR SITUATION. I CERTAINLY AM SAYING THAT I SEE THIS AMONG CHRISTIANS, THAT THE MOST CHRISTIANS ARE NOT RECOGNIZING WE ARE AT WAR. NOW, I'M NOT SAYING THESE THINGS TO CAUSE FEAR IN PEOPLE, BECAUSE IF WE ENGAGE AND IF WE JUST USE THE WEAPONS THAT HAVE BEEN GIVEN UNTO US, WELL, THEN WE ARE GUARANTEED TO WIN. WE ARE MORE THAN A CONQUEROR. JESUS HAS ALREADY WON, AND ALL WE'VE GOT TO DO IS JUST STAND IN THAT VICTORY. BUT I GUARANTEE YOU, SATAN IS STILL COMING AGAINST US, AND IF YOU ARE IGNORANT OF THE FACT THAT WE ARE IN A WAR, ALL THAT MEANS IS YOU, you CAN'T STOP THE FACT THAT SATAN IS OUT SEEKING WHOM HE MAY DEVOUR. IT'S NOT GOING TO CHANGE THAT. ALL IT MEANS IS IF YOU'RE IGNORANT OF THE WAR, AND IF YOU AREN'T PREPARING YOURSELF, AND IF YOU AREN'T ON GUARD, ALL IT MEANS IS THAT YOU'RE JUST GOING TO LOSE THIS WAR, THAT SATAN IS GOING TO STEAL FROM YOU. AND THIS IS WHAT IT GOES ON TO SAY. IT SAYS, BEWARE LEST ANY MAN SPOIL YOU 
through philosophy. The word spoil here isn't talking about how like meat spoils or fruit spoils, you know, through airborne particles and things like that. This is talking spoil like in a battle. You go out and fight your enemy and you, you kill your enemy and then you take the spoils. You strip them of everything that's of value. And this is what it's talking about. Beware lest Satan strip you of the treasures, the values, the things that God has provided for you. Boy, this is so applicable to us today. There are Christians today who is letting Satan steal their health from them. They don't understand that by the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. And over in uh, Exodus chapter 23, I believe it's verse 25, it says that he will bless your bread and water and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. The word take and away is the exact same word on either side of the word sickness and the word means to turn off. I literally believe that Jesus has purchased our healing and you don't even have to get sick. Not only can you be healed if you are sick, but you don't even have to get sick. Now, I'm not going to teach on healing right now, but I believe that that's part of what Jesus provided for us. And I would say that the vast majority, well over 50% of the body of Christ has let Satan spoil them of that treasure. You know, in my meetings, I'll often give an invitation and I'll ask if you've got sickness or something like that to stand up or to raise their hand. And it's not unusual to have 70, 80% of Christians talk about sickness, disease that they're dealing with. Again, I'm not condemning them, but I'm saying that that's letting Satan spoil you because that is not the way that God intended it to be. Over in James chapter 5, it says, Is any sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church and pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith will save the sick. Did you know if you went to the average church today, and said, man, I've got a doctor's report, I'm dying of cancer, or I've got some incurable whatever. And if you went to the average church and asked them to anoint you with oil and pray over you, they wouldn't do it. They would say, well, why, have you been to the doctor? Why don't you take this medicine? Why don't you go get this surgery? The average Christian church today does not believe in healing, or if they do believe in healing, they believe God can do it, but it's totally at His will. They don't have any understanding that by the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. And if you aren't seeing healing, it's not God who hadn't given, it's us that hadn't received. And the average person doesn't understand that. And so Satan is spoiling them, stealing from them and taking their help. You could go into the same thing about prosperity, the average Christian is struggling when the Bible says in 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, that you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though He was rich, yet for your sake He became poor, so that you through His poverty might be made rich. And the average person today, the average Christian today will say, that's not talking about financially rich. Well, it is, because if you take that scripture in context, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, Every single verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and chapter 9, I think there's a total of 39 verses. Every single verse in those two chapters is talking about money. You read it and you would have to be dishonest to say it's not talking about money. So for you to take 2 Corinthians 8 and 9 and say when it says that he became poor so that you might be made rich, and you say that's not talking about money, that's only talking about emotional, it's talking about in our relationships, it's talking about spiritual things, but it's not talking about financial things. Well, then that's dishonest. I've said this before, but if you take the text out of its context, then all you have left is a con. And people who sit there and are saying 2 Corinthians 8 9 is not talking about financial prosperity, you are not honest with Scripture. That is a con. That's a deception. Either you've been deceived or you're seeking to deceive other people. So I say all of these things to say that just like Paul said, beware, you're at war, so go on guard duty. Look for the enemy. Be prepared so that he doesn't come and spoil you, strip you of what Jesus has provided for you. 
AND YOU COULD JUST KEEP MAKING APPLICATIONS. IT SAYS IN ROMANS CHAPTER 5, VERSE 1, THEREFORE BEING JUSTIFIED BY FAITH, WE HAVE PEACE WITH GOD THROUGH OUR LORD JESUS. PEACE IS A TREMENDOUS THING THAT GOD HAS GIVEN US, AND YET THERE'S MANY CHRISTIANS THAT HAVE BEEN SPOILED. SATAN IS STRIPPING FROM THEM AND TAKING FROM THEM THE PEACE THAT GOD HAS GIVEN THEM. GALATIANS 5, 22 AND 23 SAYS THE FRUIT OF THE SPIRIT IS LOVE, JOY, PEACE, LONG-SUFFERING, GENTLENESS, GOODNESS, FAITH, MEEKNESS, AND TEMPERANCE. ALL OF THOSE THINGS HAVE BEEN GIVEN TO US. THEY ARE ALL A PRODUCT OF OUR SALVATION, AND WE ARE SUPPOSED TO BE BEARING FRUIT CONSTANTLY, AND YET THE AVERAGE CHRISTIAN HAS HAD SATAN STRIP THEM, SPOIL THEM OF THESE THINGS THAT JESUS PROVIDED. MAN, WHAT I'M SAYING, I KNOW THAT THERE ARE MANY OF YOU WATCHING THIS THAT you, YOU DON'T DOUBT THAT JESUS WANTS US TO HAVE THAT, BUT IF YOU WERE TO BE HONEST, ARE YOU WALKING IN HEALTH? ARE YOU WALKING IN PROSPERITY? ARE YOU WALKING IN JOY AND LOVE AND PEACE AND TEMPERANCE AND FAITH AND ALL OF THESE THINGS? THERE ARE MILLIONS OF PEOPLE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM RIGHT NOW THAT YOU KNOW THAT JESUS PROVIDED THESE THINGS, BUT YOU AREN'T EXPERIENCING THEM. LET ME JUST SAY TO YOU WHAT'S HAPPENED IS YOU HAVEN'T BEEN ON GUARD. YOU HAVE HAD SATAN SPOIL YOU. HE HAS STRIPPED YOU OF SOMETHING THAT JESUS PROVIDED FOR YOU. AND HOW DID IT HAPPEN? IT SAYS HERE, THROUGH PHILOSOPHY AND VAIN DECEIT, AFTER THE TRADITION OF MEN, AFTER THE RUDIMENTS OF THE WORLD, AND NOT AFTER CHRIST. YOU KNOW, IT SAYS IN MARK CHAPTER 7, VERSE 13, JESUS WAS SPEAKING, AND HE SAYS, YOUR TRADITIONS AND DOCTRINES OF MEN MAKE THE WORD OF GOD OF NO EFFECT. THERE ARE PEOPLE WATCHING THIS THAT YOU HAVE HAD SATAN SPOIL YOU, AND HOW DID IT HAPPEN? THROUGH PHILOSOPHY, VAIN DECEIT, TRADITIONS AND DOCTRINES OF MEN. AND YOU DON'T REALIZE IT, BUT AS A PERSON THINKS IN THEIR HEART, SO IS HE. PROVERBS 23, 7. YOU DON'T LIKE WHAT YOU'RE EXPERIENCING, AND YOU'RE PRAYING AND ASKING GOD TO CHANGE IT, BUT YOU HAVEN'T MADE THE CONNECTION THAT IT'S NOT PRAYER THAT'S GOING TO CHANGE YOUR SITUATION. IT'S CHANGING THE WAY YOU THINK. YOU'VE GOT TO CHANGE THE WAY YOU THINK. YOU'VE GOT TO CHANGE YOUR PHILOSOPHY. I WANT TO THANK YOU FOR WATCHING OUR YOUTUBE CHANNEL AND THE PROGRAMS THAT WE HAVE AVAILABLE, AND I WANT TO ENCOURAGE YOU THAT YOU CAN GET THE MATERIALS THAT WE'VE OFFERED. ALSO, I'D LIKE TO ENCOURAGE YOU TO LIKE OUR PROGRAM AND SUBSCRIBE TO WHAT WE'RE DOING. WE HAVE A LOT OF MATERIAL, AND I BELIEVE IT'LL BE A REAL BLESSING TO YOU. SO THANK YOU FOR BEING A PART OF IT. GOD BLESS YOU.